as was the case last time, the steps on this particular problem will be numbered consistent with the uh, algorithm given earlier. In example two, it says find the probability density function of the square root of a uniform 3-5 random variable. Well, step one was to find the support of the random variable x, which is denoted by script A. So here is step number one. Script A will be the set of all x such that x lies between 3 and 5. And that's because we have a uniform 3, 5 random variable. And we are interested in the distribution of y equals g of x is equal to the square root of x. So that's kind of the target that we're looking at here. Step two in the algorithm is to determine the cumulative distribution function of x denoted by capital F sub x of x. So in this case the probability density function is given by one half, that's one over b minus a for x values between 3 and 5. And because of that, when we try to find the cumulative distribution function, capital Fx of x, we want to find the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to little x, and that will be the integral from the lower limit of the support, which is 3, up to x of 1 half and again because there's an x in the upper limit here we want to use a dummy variable we'll just choose w in this case well that integral is w divided by 2 evaluated from 3 up to x and so you wind up with x minus 3 divided by 2 for the cumulative distribution function and that is defined on the support 3 to 5. So if I were to carefully write out the cumulative distribution function in this case, it would be fx of x is equal to 0 for x less than or equal to 0. On what I would call the interesting part here, it is x minus 3 divided by 2 and that is for x values from 3 to 5. And I just noticed this is not x less than or equal to 0. This is x less than or equal to 3. And finally, it is 1 for x values greater than or equal to 5. Now, step 3 in the process is to determine the support of y equals g of x which is denoted by script b. So here is script b and this will be the set of all y such that and now what you have is you're trying to figure out where does this transformation map our original support 3 to 5 to. Well that's going to map to the square root of 3 all the way to the square root of 5. So there is script B and that's the first three steps. Now step number four is write the cumulative distribution function of y as f sub y of y do that here f sub y of y is the probability that y is less than or equal to y. And then at that point you replace capital Y with the square root of x. And now we're into step 5 and step 5 is perform the steps of algebra required to express this in terms of its cumulative distribution function. So clearly we should square both sides on the inequality. This will be the probability x is less than or equal to y squared. 
whenever you see x less than or equal to something that is the CDF of x evaluated at the something which in this case is y squared and since we have the CDF over here of x this just becomes y squared minus 3 divided by 2 so if we were to carefully write this out we would again write it in these three pieces but for now since I'm a little short on room I will just write this as the piece on its support. Finally step six since this question is asking for the probability density function I should differentiate this and so this is the optional step six which is find the probability density function. Oops. Going the wrong direction here. Hopefully we can get this back. There we go. The probability density function f sub y of y is the derivative of this. Well the derivative of y squared is 2y so you are just left with f sub y of y equals y and that's for y values between the square root of 3 and the square root of 5. On the next page I am going to show a little bit of the geometry associated with what has happened here. And here is that next page. The probability density function of x is 1 half and that's for x values between 3 and 5 and what that looks like is here is x here is f x of x and if you put in tick marks at 1 2 3 4 and 5 this probability density function looks like that hovers at one half now the next thing we have is we have what is the distribution of y but before we do that we're going to take a look at the transformation here is x and here is y and I am going to draw y equals the square root of x which is our transformation so when we get to 3 1 2 3 4 5 when we get to 3 that maps to the square root of 3 and when you come up to 5 that value maps to the square root of 5 and so what you what you can see happening here by the shape of this is more of the probability density function at higher values of y are being packed in um, to a shorter shorter interval and so when you draw the probability density function of y here it is f sub y of y well that's just the uh, 45 degree line I won't be able to draw it at 45 degrees here but it looks something like this that's the line y uh, just the uh, 45 degree line because you know that you have f sub y of y is equal to y and that's between the square root of 3 and the square root of 5 and so when you go to the square root of 3 and the square root of 5 you know that you get a probability density function that looks like this again this particular transformation packs a little more of the density in on the higher ranges of y and that's why you get this which is what you expect Finally, an apple confirmation of all of this. 
if you set x equal to a uniform random variable between 3 and 5, define the transformation g to be x going to the square root of x, and that's valid from 3 to 5, and then you draw the, or you call the transform function with parameters x, which is the uh, random variable of interest, and g, which is the transformation of interest, those values will return f sub y of y for y values between the square root of 3 and the square root of 5, and that's exactly what we have right here.